Okay, I'd like to tell you about the energy stored in a capacitor because um, what capacitors do is they store charge and, and they store energy. And so um, let me explain how we actually can calculate the energy stored in a capacitor. What we're going to do is we're going to take a parallel plate capacitor and connect a voltmeter to it. So there's a, here's a voltmeter that's connected with some wires to two plates. Now the voltage on the on the voltmeter is going to vary. Right now this is uncharged, so there's no charge on here, but it's going to vary. So rather than make it a capital V, I'm going to make it a lowercase v. This this means that's a that's the voltage, the instantaneous voltage at any time. Instantaneous voltage. And um, the charge that's on any one plate, once we start to charge it, that's going to be um, a lowercase q because I want that to be changing too. So that's going to be a variable. So this is the instantaneous charge on the positive plate. Instantaneous charge at any given time. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to um, take a little charge off of here, dq, a very tiny charge, dq, and I'm going to move it over to there. Now the first charge I do that with, it's very easy because I'm not fighting any electric field. The next charge I do that with, it's going to be tougher because um, the charge the, when I put the first one there and I go back and get another one and go back and get another one, each time I do that, um, the the next one I bring in there, it's these are fighting it. So if this is a positive charge, once this starts to charge up a little bit, then it's not it's no longer easy for me to do this, and it gets tougher and tougher and tougher. Okay, how much energy is is added every time I bring a charge dq over to here? Well, it's just v times q. So the v the energy that's added each time, the little energy that gets added, the little change in potential energy, will be equal to um, just the V at any given time times dQ. Now I'm getting that formula from the just your basic that voltage is the potential energy per charge. So if I bring this over there, VQ is equal to U. Okay, so uh, the so the little change in energy is when I bring a little DQ over to this other side is the potential difference at that given time times DQ. All right, so um, let me add up all the U's to get the total U. The total U when you charge up a capacitor then um, will be just a summation of V DQ. Now, um, V depends on Q. So how, how much Q over there is here and here, that is going to affect my voltmeter. The more charge I put on here, the more V there's going to be there. And so let's, let's take a look. Um, we're going to use our formula C equals Q over V. That's your basic capacitance formula, whether you have a, a parallel plate capacitor or any other type of capacitor. This is true for all capacitors. Okay, so um, if I solve for V, apparently V is equal to Q over C. So I'm going to bring this V over here. That's going to be, so this is going to be the integral of V, which is Q at any time, over C, dQ. See how that's V? Now, um, this is a varying Q, that's why, and that's why it's a varying V. So this is a variable. That's a constant. C is a constant. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, charge this up from zero charge to a total charge of, um, how about Q final, capital Q. All right, so if I take the integral of this, it looks like I get one half or excuse me, 1 over C, pull that C out, and then that's going to be 1 half uh, Q squared. That's what, that's what that integral turns into, 0 to Q. That's going to be equal to 1 half 1 over C 
Q squared. This is the energy stored in a capacitor. One half, one over C, Q squared. That's how you get the energy stored in a capacitor. Now here's the thing. If, if the energy stored in the capacitor, let's call that U sub C, is one half, one over C, Q squared, then we can get a few other forms of this because um, we know that um, Q is equal to, if we use this equation, we know Q is equal to CV. So if I put in, for Q I put in CV, we can get a couple more equations out of this. I put in CV here. That would be C squared V squared. So that can simplify to one half C V squared. That's another form of the energy stored in a capacitor. So you got that one and this one. I don't, the only one I have memorized is this one. I don't have that one memorized. I just, I just derive it when I need it. And then, um, let's see, if we wanted to have this, these have, this has C and V, and this has C and Q. How about if we just want a Q and V? Let's get rid of the C. So for C, for this equation, I'm going to put in, or how about for this equation, for C, I'm going to put in Q over V. So let's see, one, one, one half, for C, I'm going to put in that that's Q over V. That's C times B squared. So that looks like that is going to be one half Q times V. So those are your three equations for the energy stored in a capacitor. That's how you figure out the energy stored in a capacitor. Um, let's just make sense, since we have a little more time, let's just make sense of this, of this equation. If we have a, the reason why C is in the denominator is because if we have a really small capacitor, one that doesn't store a lot of charge, then what that means is if we have a lot of charge on there, then we're going to have a lot of energy. Because it's, it does, if you force a lot of charge on there, there's a lot of tension. And so the, the, the smaller this is, the bigger the energy is. So that's why the Q is on top and it's squared because as you add more and more charge to a capacitor, there's just more energy. But you add the same charge to a big capacitor and a little capacitor and you have more energy in the, in the little capacitor. All right, thanks.